guys and welcome to today's video. Today I am want to share with you a slightly different video for me. Honestly, I don't think it's even going to get that many views, but it's just what I want to share with you. As you can see from the title, I am going to share with you the books I read in April, but I want to mention I'm 100% not a booktuber. I read only seven books last year but since then i've been making a little bit more of an effort to get into reading and since we are social distancing i have been reading quite a lot i'm going to be looking at my phone list because i would want to look at my goodreads to tell you what i rated the book and yeah i read 11 10 or 11 books in April my target for the year was originally 12 I hit that last month so I've moved my target up 24 I think I'm at about 17 books currently so I think I'm going to move that a bit higher I'm not sure what number and that's the issue maybe I'll keep it at 24 and just what, however many more I read over 24 will be a bonus the fact that I reached 12 is very very surprising I am relatively new to reading or at least reading a lot and it's worth noting that i use audiobooks a lot i always have a hard copy and i always read along i am basically a really slow reader i'm dyslexic sometimes it just takes me very very long to fully grasp what that word is i'm only like slightly dyslexic but sometimes like if the word is grotesque i'll be like and if it's in my ear I can just hear it and recognize it like at the same time which is quite nice when i'm using an audiobook which i've used for most of these there might be one book that i didn't use an audiobook for and i'm listening i don't ever just listen to the audiobook i always have the hard copy as well i would say i read and listen to about 98 percent of it and like two percent would be like just listening and that's for example if i need to just grab something from the cupboard over there i won't pause my audiobook i might just put my book down and go and get something oh also some of these books were lent to me i think six of them were lent to me which is probably part of the reason why i read them so quickly because i want to return them to the person that lent me them but the first book i read and the one that i'm counting as like half a book is the boy the mole the fox and the horse inside this book says it's between the age of i think it says eight and eighty or nine and ninety something like that i basically think this is for any age group it's just a beautiful book this isn't actually my copy i will be buying a copy but i'm going to see if i can find a second hand copy it's basically a book about a boy a mole a fox and a horse and like they all have their own little personality it's really cute i'll read you a page it says is it the moon asked the boy it's a teacup stain said the mole and where there's tea there's cake so it's just like a cutesy book for example another page this says you fell but i got you and it's the boy and the horse really really sweet it's a great book if you're looking to maybe send someone a little treat whilst they're in quarantine these are currently nine pounds on amazon equally it's a great book if you're looking for a gift for a i would say a child but it's probably the sort of book that they could keep forever i think it's really very sweet i've even seen that some people have cut up the book and framed the photos i feel like it's a bit of a shame to cut the book up but i understand like maybe that would be a really beautiful image framed in a child's bedroom but just a beautiful book it's a very popular one on, Net on netflix it's a very popular one on goodreads it has excellent reviews and i can totally see why the rest of them i'm going to do in, in order i'm going to try and describe the books but some of them some of them i have no doubt i'm going to really struggle to describe the first book i read this month was mad girl by bryony gordon she's a british journalist i kind of feel that she hangs out or at least is often referenced by um dolly alton and i like dolly alton i like her podcast and she she's just generally mentioned quite a lot in like podcasts and stuff so i picked this book up a little while ago from a charity shop for a pound it's about Bryony's ocd bulimia alopecia drugs and mental illness it's definitely one that needs a bit of a trigger warning so just bear that in mind i picked it up for a pound and then when i started reading it i was like oh why did i pick this up actually i feel like even before i started reading it i really wasn't looking forward to reading this book i don't really like like memoirs and autobiographies and stuff like that you know i don't like them it's just that i rarely rate them five stars it probably took me like a week to read the first 40 pages and then once i just sat down i really enjoyed it i actually gave this a five stars i think it's excellent it's probably not one that i'm going to reread but i was almost a little bit sad that it had finished like i really i would have liked to have kept reading about her life and everything else that went with it she has got quite a lot of other books I'm unsure if i will be picking any of them up maybe if i come across one I'll, i will read it but it's just not the genre that i currently want to be reading i think that's also the other issue 
it was definitely worth a read then i read one day i have had this book for the longest time i think a brand sent me like a, a like girls night in kit years ago now and inside i think there was this book and one other book maybe the fault in our stars or something else but i've had this book for a while a story about emma and dexter they meet on their graduation day and we check in with them on the same day of the year over 20 years i don't think we actually check in every single year but every time we do check in it's on the 15th of july also took me a while to get into this one it was a good book i gave this a four out of five it was probably more like a three and a half out of five but I rounded up. I haven't seen the film. I'm gonna watch the film, but four out of five, I think, is okay. three and a half out of five. It was okay. It was relatively interesting. It was a bit long as well. It's 430 pages, so I think it was a bit long. I didn't really get enough of a story for that much of a commitment. I mean, it's not huge, but it was long enough. I, I read the bulk of this book in a day, so that I felt like I wanted to read something else quite quickly, and I think that's why I picked F. Scott Fitzgerald, The Great Gatsby, which is a bit of a stupid way to choose a book, but I think that's the issue with Goodreads, and I'm really conflicted as to whether I think Goodreads is a good thing or not. It does encourage me to read more, but sometimes it encourages me to to read stuff as quickly as possible to stick it off a list which is not really i think the way i should be reading but anyway read the great gatsby it's a book i have always wanted to reread i read this for either english gcc or english a level i'm not sure i also really like these like paper two pound penguin popular classics because i really just batter books when i read them and this is a really nice one to like really hold and read i've recently been reading in the sun and that's how i've got through so much is because i've enjoyed sitting out in the sun and doing it and so like just being able to hold it in one hand is really really satisfying so i really like these anyway this is about gatsby and his ongoing love for daisy and daisy's in a different relationship i really struggle to not give spoilers because i i can't remember like what's a spoiler and what's not but i feel like at this stage most of us have either seen the film or read the book I enjoyed this. It's such a, a small book that you can so easily read this in like three, four hours. I don't think it's anything incredible, but it's just so quick to read that I would definitely still highly recommend it. I would reread it in the future. I gave this a four out of five, and I remember like really not enjoying it for English, GCC, or A level. I really enjoyed it the second time round. It is kind of a book that not much happens in it, but I like books that don't really have that much going on in them as long as they're not too long which we'll come to in a second enjoyed this one then oh i don't have it my next book isn't here so i'm gonna insert a photo then i read a book called some kids i taught and what they taught me and i had picked up this book in a charity shop ages ago i bought it for my boyfriend because he's a teacher it's only got 341 ratings on goodreads which implies it hasn't really been read that much me and my boyfriend have always kind of joked that he should have written a, a book about teaching in the same way that this is gonna hurt was written about the nhs and essentially this book is that i really really loved it um it's very similar feel to this is going to hurt largely based in london schools which i think also made me really enjoy it it made me so happy that i went to a, a london state school i loved it and i 100 percent hope to send my kids to a London State School in the future. I think that's such an asset to be surrounded by people that were raised, or, who, or at least whose parents and grandparents were raised differently to you and their home life is different to yours. I, I just really loved it and it, it made me like thankful again for teachers. I mean, I, of course I'm thankful for teachers. My boyfriend's a teacher, I, I understand the difficulties that teachers go through, but yeah it was a great book i would highly recommend it very similar to this was gonna hurt but it hasn't really been like as pushed i think it was just as well written i think quite a positive look at state schools yeah it was a good book i really enjoyed it i would highly recommend it especially if you're interested in the teaching profession it was easy to read well written and personally i really enjoyed it then another one i bought in a charity shop actually in exactly the same charity shop this i bought ages ago i the cover caught my eye i paid a lot for this i think i paid five pounds which in a charity shop is a lot of money for a book this again only has 70 ratings it's, it's got a 4.01 rating on goodreads so clearly not a lot of people have read this um this is written by an oxford university lecturer and i just hated this book honestly i just think i'm not like cultured and not well read enough for this book and it's as simple as that 
it just referenced an insane amount of other authors and books it, it just alienated me essentially i just hated it but that's all i can say it felt like when someone wants just wants to prove to you how much they've read and how clever they are since i have not read that much and i am not the smartest person ever i did not enjoy this book this is the whole book like this and this amount is just th further reading and sources like that's insane okay and acknowledgements but it just like every single page referenced something else that i had no idea about it, it felt like the author wrote this in the hope that in the future it will be studied at, at college or university or somewhere it just wasn't for me I, I i just really did not enjoy this yeah i rated it a two i'm thinking maybe i should give it a one but it's not that like it wasn't well written i'm sure that there's i'm sure there's people out there that would love this book it just it just wasn't for me i just i bought the wrong book and then i read the course of love by aileen de Botton. i haven't read any of the authors by the way i'm gonna list all the books down below this i gave a three out of five at times i thought this was a great book at other times i thought it was boring there were bits of this that were so incredibly interesting so it's a book about like love and what happens post marriage obviously isn't a topic that is very often covered but it seems to be for a reason and maybe it's just because it's that little bit more boring. There was a lot of analysis of relationships post-marriage. And that part was very interesting. But then the actual story wasn't. There was nothing overly gripping. It felt like I was reading a textbook almost. I think this could have been great. But again, it just wasn't for me. Some people have said this is an incredible book. I didn't love it. I really like the idea of a post-marriage book, but yeah, I just think that this missed the mark slightly. Okay, then I read Where'd You Go, Bernadette by Maria Semple. Um, I gave this book a four out of five. This book was everywhere for a while. It came out, came out eight years ago, but I think maybe since the film came out, this book has just been everywhere. It's a mystery book, I guess, but it's not a thriller or anything like that, I wouldn't say. It's about a mum, a daughter and her, and a father, and they're like story. And then, I mean, you can tell from the title, Bernadette, the mum goes missing. I really enjoyed this. I think maybe I didn't have high hopes for it. The reviews are 3.9, so they're okay. But I loved it. I thought it was really interesting. Maybe I'll read more mystery books. It wasn't a thriller, which I maybe I liked. I don't know. I haven't read any thrillers, so I, I can't be sure that I do or don't like thrillers. I haven't really read any. But I enjoyed it. It was a, a nice, easy, quick-ish read. Would highly recommend this. Again, I probably wouldn't reread, but I really did enjoy it. Oh. Then... I read um, Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. Alcott. The film obviously came out relatively recently. I haven't seen it yet. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to read the book and then I'll watch the film. The film on DVD and like the rent on Amazon, for example, is released on the 11th of May. So I still haven't seen it yet. I thought I'd give this a go. I started reading it and it was just beautiful. This is a kid's book, by the way, which just blows my mind because as a kid, I would have never have had the patience to read 600 pages. And as a child, I really did enjoy reading. I was really enjoying it. It's really beautifully written. I It was quite magical as well. However, it is so, so slow and then nothing really happens it's a story about five sisters they were once quite wealthy but now they're poorer and it's about like their relationships with their mum their father is at war i believe or at least elsewhere and although it was really beautiful i just feel that it was too long for too little of a story um, I am glad I read it, but I really did reach a point where I was pushing through and really hoping I'd finish it. it. Took me days to read this. I thought I would have got through this in like two days, three days maximum. And I think it took me like a solid week. I was really having to push through this book. And it's not because it was bad. I wasn't hating it. It's just that nothing was happening. I, I really, really struggled with that. There is like a few things that happen, but not enough i was reading like 100 200 pages and nothing had happened i do worry that it's put me off reading other classics but a few few people have dm'd me on instagram with other classics that they said i should read after this one that are better than this one and people are saying that the film is much better than the book so i look forward to watching that 
next week and then i read educated it's about a girl growing up in america i can never remember what part of america that's my issue anyway her father is a mormon but like an extremely extremely strict mormon it's deeper than that his views aren't really just because he's a mormon he's potentially got like other issues there and she doesn't really get education her whole life just a bit crazy and they don't go to hospitals or they don't trust doctors they she doesn't have a birth her official birthday there's just so much going on in this book i think it was great again i don't love memoirs i gave this a four out of five just because i've decided i'm going to leave my five stars for books that i am sad that they finished and I wasn't necessarily sad that this finished because her story was so crazy that I wouldn't want it to carry on. I was gripped the whole way through. I think I read this in like a day and a half, two days. And I would highly recommend this one. I've actually already recommended it to a few of my friends. I've like sent a picture like, hey, you should order this on Amazon. I think you'd really enjoy it. It's been on my to read list for like a solid year as well. Then a reread. I think I've mentioned this before. I, I lent my normal people to my cousin who then left it in Portugal, we think. Um, and I just haven't bought one because I'm just going to wait till I come across a second-hand one because there's no point. I've already bought it once, so I might as well just buy a second-hand one now. But I was kindly lent this one. And honestly, it's just a great book. I really, really love it. I, I think I said earlier that I like books that not much happens in, and it's true. Um, I do. So this, not much happens in, but I still love it. Whereas this, not much happens, and I think it's a bit boring. But this seems to pull on my emotions a little bit more and it's shorter this is half the size of this book even though it doesn't look it this book i loved i didn't like conversations with friends anywhere near as normal pe as much as normal people my boyfriend and i also watched the series which came out on bbc or on hulu depending where you are and i loved it it's a beautiful book i read it a second time round, and i gave it another five stars and i look forward to more sally rooney books or other books similar to this so if you've got any recommendations do let me know i ordered online a couple of books some of them i'm reading next month um but one of them was why the crawdads sing because everyone has been raving about this i enjoyed it but people are saying this is their favorite one of their favorite books ever it wasn't that for me i think it was really beautifully written and it described everything so incredibly well I think maybe the ending just wasn't quite right for me. At the point where I was like, oh my god, like, this might be an incredible book. I reached a point where I was like, oh, maybe not quite. Many of you probably already know this, but it's written about a girl who lives in a marsh and she has like lots of family issues and she ends up growing up largely alone. And so this book tackles like lot tackles like loneliness and kind of being an outsider and lots of other difficult subjects that you that you don't really see that often in books oh and then there's a murder which i wasn't really expecting but i really I, I did enjoy that part of it but then i feel like the ending just wasn't really what i wanted it to be parts of it were really really beautiful but it just what it just wasn't a five star for me but still that said it's potentially one i would reread re re because there was stuff that was happening in this book this book had loads going on and because of that i would potentially reread it because maybe like i missed something i don't know i feel like when there's lots going on i'm more tempted to reread a book didn't love it it was it's a four out of five for me it, i didn't hate it it was a great book but just just really really overhyped in my opinion so those are all the books i read in april i did also start me talk pretty one day by david sadaris i'm actually not 100 percent sure this is really my sort of book i think i realized that maybe i don't love short stories it's different you don't really like connect as much and maybe i don't really like comedy written down either although you know what like i know this sounds ridiculous but it really took me long to get into comedy like stand up and comedy on tv as well so maybe i just haven't found like, the right sort of comedy for me but I just feel like there's other things I would rather read than this, but I'm probably going to finish it. I, I don't think I'm going to buy any other David Sedaris. And then Women in Berlin, Anonymous, I've started this book. Um, and that's going to be my next read. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm definitely not a booktuber. I'm definitely not a book pro. If anything, this month has just shown me how much I could have read had I read at this speed previously which i definitely haven't or even at half this speed previously i'd be happy with a book a, book a week 100 percent. just hoping that it will start a good habit from here on do let me know if you enjoyed this honestly it's probably not going to be overly regular i might do another one for next month just because i enjoy talking about books but i just don't think that many people will enjoy these sort of books from me these sort of videos from me i probably will do it again do let me know if you did enjoy it and like this video as well if you did subscribe if you haven't subscribed and i'll see you all very soon bye